Sir, should I start? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes. Respected audience, honorable principal sir, and dignitaries, Pranobi madam and Sudha madam. We have assembled on this pleasant afternoon on the third day of the webinar series five. The last two days, we had the opportunity to enrich our knowledge from three eminent dignitaries. And today we have with us Dr. Muni Yandi Singaravel. Without spending further time, we can move to Professor Shudha Anjeladhan for the technical station, session of day three after taking permission from our honorable principal sir. Sir, can we proceed to the technical session? to the next proceed to the next yes let us move to technical session with professor shudha angela dhan thank you boishaki madam uh, as we all know that circadian rhythm is a biological clock that is built in our brain throughout the functionality of everyone's day and night process within a 24 hour clock frame. And it devises our body to function in a healthy way of healthy routines. So to discuss more on this topic, biological rhythms, today we have with us Professor Singaravan. Welcome, sir. It's an honor for me to introduce Professor Singaravan. Professor Singravel is currently a professor in the Department of Zoology, Institute of Science, Banaras Hindu University, and I'm proud to share that I am one of Sir's students. Professor Singravel received his MSc, MPhil, PhD from Madurai Kamraj University. For his tireless efforts and dedication, he has received many awards like DST, SERC, Fast Track Proposal for Young Scientist Scheme Award, JSPA Postdoctoral Fellowship Award for, from Government of Japan. He is also a member of most reputed committees like UGC Advisory Committee for UGC SAP DRS Phase 3 Program, North Maharashtra University, Jalgaon, prospective faculty member of DST SERC School in Chronobiology, and many more. He has contributed many minor and major projects of CSIR, UGC, DST, DST CSRI, ICMR, UGC ISF through his valued research papers, reviews, articles, supervised many PhD students and postgraduate students, and significantly contributed with more than 35 publications, including. 33 international and three national journals. He has also edited books of Oxford and IBS publishers. He has shown his tremendous leadership and administrative and management capabilities by being convener of DST FIST level two implement implementation committee, member of BHU steering committee of knowledge management and innovation cell, member of project screening committee, member of project staff selection committee, member and secretary of department research committee, EC member of Indian Society for Chronobiology, member of admission committee, organizing secretary of national symposium on chronobiology organizing secretary of national symposium on behavioral ecology and many more his area of specialization includes photic and non-photic phase resetting of mammal circadian clock shift work on circadian rhythm disruption and cognitive deficits behavioral ecology of daniel squirrel Thank you, sir, for joining us today, and we welcome you once again, sir. Now, I hand Thank over you. the session. 
to Professor Singaravel to deliver his talk. Thank you, Sudha. Thank you, Sudha. And uh, it's my pleasure to share some of my work and findings and experiences with your uh, students. And I really thank your principal and your organizing team. And uh, I could see your efforts to organize this webinar, even though in between uh, you face a little uh, technical uh, delays, but uh, I really uh, see that uh, how that you are determined to go to this uh, webinar. So once again, thank you all. With this uh, information, I can move to my lecture. And uh, because mostly this, uh, after having discussion with you, then um, I decided to prepare some basic information about, about biological rhythms. In day to day, how we are using that, uh, some of we are, uh, of course, experiencing the rhythm, rhythmic phenomena, and what we can see, some of the basic information, and uh, how we can be able to measure some of the rhythms and its parameters, and we can uh, use for our betterment of health. So, then uh, daily, of course, there's a rotation of earth that will provide a day and night cycles for us. And uh, rhythmic behavior is, uh, of course, in the living organism, we can see. And the, the word rhythm indicates it's a, a repeated events at regular interval. That's what uh, sometimes people used to misunderstood, or sometimes people used to hear the word frequently rhythm means the rhythm of music. Uh, if you could see even Hindustani or Karnati, uh, you would have seen that uh, the swaras, uh, the seven swaras that sari, the ma pa the nis. Okay. So by having that, when you are changing the uh, the distance or that time lagging behind between the different uh, swaras, you can. Uh, uh, you can create new ragas. Okay. So the similar way here that rhythmic events, that's repeated events you can see in our life. And uh, we can see that the, uh, the, uh, the events between uh, that uh, two, that the distance between two events or the interval between two events that will determine that the period length okay, or cycle, cyclicity. So that uh, we could see the temporal organization in living organism because it's a kind of adaptive behavior because yearly in the evolutionary perspective, we could see those days in the initial days that animal evolved to adapt to that uh, day and night cycles. The reason behind uh, that, uh, by the way, that they can be able to, um, what we call, they can be able able to survive better, they can be able to prevent from predation, they can be able to get a good foraging uh, space, you know, they used to have their own niche in the environment. So that's uh, the word biological clock is, stands for an innate physiological system capable of measuring the passage of time in a living organism. So when we talk about the rhythms, you know, that's, uh, I told you that uh, there are different period length based on that they have, uh, of course, divided into different uh, types of rhythms. And you could see that uh, the four major types, even though there are many types in the natural environment and uh, in the physiology also, but there are four that categorized into four major types of rhythms. One is circadian rhythm, circadian rhythm, circadian lunar rhythm, and circadian rhythm. If you could see here that the circa stands for that uh, the meaning is about, okay, in uh, Latin, and the dies means a day. So about 24 hours rhythm is known as circadian rhythm. They used to normally synchronize with the environment light dark cycles. And again, that circadian rhythm has been categorized into two, and one is infradian rhythm. That is the period length, you know, this is a small t stands for, of course, that's a technically we used to call tau. Uh, 
that is the tau greater than 24 hours is known as infradian rhythm and the tau less than 24 hours is known as that's uh, ultradian rhythm and in addition to that there are circadian rhythm that the period length is about 12.4 hours rhythm and uh, mostly that some of the marine organism they used to adapt living in that marine environment they used to synchronize with that uh, ocean tides uh, sometimes that uh, higher uh, that's uh, higher tides or lower tides you know especially foraging behavior they used to uh, synchronize with the ocean tides they used to that used to be occur once in 12.4 hours and similarly circa lunar rhythm is about 28 hours 28 days because that uh, some of the physical activity biological activity synchronized with that new moon or uh, full moon you know that's a quarter moon and uh, therefore that uh, the period is 28 days and similarly circadian rhythm that is uh, occurring once in about 12 months because if you could see in all the cases and it's, uh, the period length is flexible, if you could see here. Therefore, we are using the word circa in all the cases, prefix the word circa. Circa dian, circa tidal, circa lunar, and circa annual. Okay? Otherwise, circa means about, it means it's not exactly that the period length. It's a flexible, and similarly, that's the quarter period, the water and the natural environment, how that is, uh, during summer days, winter days, they are flex. They are, of course, a deviation. You know, there will be deviation in that quarter period. Similarly, the biological rhythms are also having some flexibility. It's not rigid exactly. It's occurring with a fixed period. So therefore, that's uh, we used to call some plasticity in the period length. Okay, out of these rhythms in that environment. That widely studied rhythm is about 24 hours rhythm because it's uh, occurring once in 24 hours. It would be easy, so generating of our data would be easy relatively. And uh, many of our body functions used to have that uh, circadian uh, phenomena. And uh, of course, that's uh, uh, to study that circadian rhythm. People need to wait uh, to get a single data one year. You know, if we miss some data, then again we have to for wait for another year, another year. So therefore, people normally the researchers uh, we could see when we compare with circadian rhythm data, uh, you could see that relatively less data for circadian rhythm. Similarly, that circadian lunar rhythm is relatively one has to wait for a long time again, and the circadian uh, tidal rhythm that's one can one has to. Uh, there will be a limitation one has to uh, go to close to the marine environment to, to get that uh, data to the study. So that the circadian, to say that circadian, that there will be certain features. Otherwise, the difference should be between the physical environment because that light cycle occur once in 24 hours. That is also circadian rhythm. That's uh, but uh, that will not fall under biological rhythm. That the reason behind, uh, because certain prayer, certain features one has to meet to uh, uh, specify that is uh, the particular organisms having circadian rhythm. So similarly, you could see that's uh, the characteristic features of circadian rhythm. Uh, there are uh, um, many features that's like uh, about 24 hours period length. You could see ubiquitous in nature. You can find almost all living organisms. And the entrainability, it means that's the light and temperature they used to influence. They used to synchronize the rhythm. Then persistence of uh, circadian rhythm. Persistence uh, means that uh, even uh, normally that the animal, that the animal used to get some environmental cues to uh, synchronize, to express to entrain the rhythm, even if we remove the environmental cues, still the uh, animal used to express that uh, persistence of rhythm. We used to call that free running rhythm. Free running means in the absence of uh, uh, external cues or external environmental cues. So persistence under constant darkness, we used to frequently used to say that's a 
D D. You know, D stands for darkness. Twelve hours darkness. Twelve hours actually. So twenty four hours darkness. Similarly, twenty four hours light. Because when we are keeping an organism under twenty four hours light or twenty four hours darkness, the animals may not get the external cues to run their clock to uh, uh, put uh, time input to their clock instead of that endogenously they used to generate their rhythmic phenomena. Similarly, we can shift the phase of the uh, rhythm. So sometimes by using the single light pulse or uh, some drugs, one can shift the phase of the rhythm. Uh, simply saying that uh, we can uh, suppose if we have our wrist watch when it's running uh, fast or delay. Normally, the those days nowadays mostly people are using that uh, digital clock, a digital wrist watch. And previously, there's uh, those days uh, people, even some people till date, we could see that uh, the wristwatch used to have that mechanical wristwatch. We can pull out that knob. We can uh, uh, give the key. You know that uh, uh, then uh, if it is uh, sometimes running fast or delay, one can pull out the knob and we can reset the clock. Similarly, all our biological clock can be reset. So that is advantage. That's why it's uh, sometimes if our biological clock is running fast or slow, and uh, we can reset the clock by using the light pulse and uh, other uh, drugs. So that's uh, again light intensity. That's uh, the uh, well studied one of the parameters one can use to reset the clock to manipulate the rhythm. So temperature compensation because if we could see. All the biological rhythms are expressed by the organisms under the lot of biochemical reactions. And those reactions will not suppose biochemical since it's uh, uh, having that biochemical reactions running the clock. That uh, if the temperature is increased or decreased, the uh, rhythm uh, period length may not be changed at least for 10 degrees Celsius every 10 degrees Celsius. So that genetic basis, because most of the rhythms is genetic basis, and uh, uh, that's that's why that the variations we could see in the natural environment. So that's uh, let us see that's how one can measure that rhythm. What kinds of rhythms we are going to see in a few couple coming slides. That's what are the different examples uh, for circadian rhythm. How one can measure. And mostly, the researchers, whenever they uh, look for that uh, model organism to study, uh, they used to look for that cost and benefits. That's uh, uh, to select that's uh, the organism. Sometimes it would be difficult to study the rhythmic phenomena in elephants because it would be difficult to maintain that elephant. To uh, that it would be involving a lot of cost to. Uh, maintain the elephant to feed the elephant. Similarly, it would be difficult to study the rhythmic phenomena in uh, tiger or uh, lion. The reason behind you know is that it would be not easy to uh, handle or uh, not easy to approach close to the animal. So, therefore, always people used to look for that's uh, the docile animal easy to maintain, easy to um, uh, look for, and easy to. Uh, manipulate, handle the animals. Therefore, uh, you know that's that uh, one of the uh, favorite animal model is Drosophila. That's uh, almost all the uh, biologists they used to use that uh, Drosophila as a model to study. Similarly, that's you can see that Drosophila is well uh, used and uh, to study the circadian activity pattern, and it would be easy to handle. And one can uh, that's. Uh, uh, used to place uh, in a small tube, the five millimeter diameter tube. Uh, of course, this is eight centimeter, and you could see that uh, placing one side forward, one side that's uh, uh, that cotton wool or uh, foam rubber plug. One can use to prevent from escaping and place inside. You could see that in the uh, the fly, whenever needs food, they can have that comfortably at libitum and they can move freely from here and there and uh, uh, they cannot escape. So whenever uh, they used to be active, especially that's, uh, the fly used to be 
uh, denoted as diurnal they used to act during daytime otherwise morning and evening hours and uh, this activity when the, whenever they are moving from one end to another end they used to be uh, post uh, the signal used to be picked up by using the infrared emitter and receiver uh, when that uh, continuously that infrared uh, waves used to be released and uh, another receiver used to be there whenever there is a break by moving the blocking that uh, the wave uh, pathway then the signal will be picked up so similarly there's many flies one can measure at a time and we can uh, uh, analyze the results so this is a in large scale one can measure at a time 32 flies 32 channel a recorder will be there for 64 you know that multiplication one can you can see that and similarly controlled environmental conditions also we can have a small uh, that uh, bod incubator we can maintain that uh, flies and uh, you can see that there are uh, different kinds of flies you can see that wild type flies you can see that's uh, 24 hours because when we are recording the data used to come like this activity you know count per 30 minutes you could see that uh, the x axis uh, is uh, time uh, number of days and y axis count per minutes you know count per 30 minutes that the, the based on that you can see that how much the active how much is there. and similarly we can see that uh, we can compare with that uh, uh, drug uh, given that fly how it's active or other flies naturally there are different uh, kinds of flies that uh, they have seen that uh, the wild type flies used to have that's about 24 hours rhythmic uh, rhythmicity they used to have that's 12 hours active 12 hours rest and uh, you can see that's uh, the number of days how that's showing that activity okay 12 hours active we used to call it activity record or sometimes actogram similar to ecg and other uh, graphs so that's uh, there are flies that's uh, mutant flies you could see short pe short period mutant flies they used to have that activity daily onset of activity uh, that's uh, advancing day by day you know if it is less than 24 hours we can see similar kind of pattern. if it is more than 24 hours you can see that's other long period of fly and another kind of flies that is ear rhythmic you know if uh, some mutants used to be ear rhythmic it means there is no clear cut pattern of active rest uh, clearly instead of uh, that active whenever they find comfortable throughout the period throughout 24 hours active and in between little rest so that other models, uh, this is not a very familiar model. Uh, a few laboratories in the world, uh, they are working in uh, cricket insects, you know, crickets actually, it's another insects. This is a nocturnal insect model. It would be very easy to uh, manipulate uh, their clock because little bigger size than that uh, Drosophila. Drosophila is very tiny, but still people are using for that convenient of uh, admin to handle and cost and benefit analysis guys uh, better for the research so this is uh, relatively the largest size one can manipulate the clock or uh, uh, you can uh, surgically remove some of the structures and you can keep it the animals for recording and this is a recording setup you know that's a uh, one can have a small tilting plate and with a cover and place that's a water bottle here and a bit hazy otherwise it's a small box type uh, plexiglass box type uh, in uh, which uh, inside there will be a tilting plate okay so that's uh, whenever the crickets moving one side the plate used to be tilted when they move opposite side opposite side the plate used to tilt and below there will be a magnet piece used to be there and read relays which used to be connected with the computer and you can computer data can be used to draw the uh, activity record otherwise known as actogram okay from the activity record one can analyze when started activity when closed the activity okay. so that's uh, this is another advantage and uh, you could see that's uh, the um, Cricket insect used to have the clock, uh, the tissue, 
especially in the arctic lobe you know so how one can find out where the location where is the clock is located uh, by using surgically removal of certain tissues and keeping the behavioral pattern or observing the behavioral pattern and one can see uh, whether that the rhythmic phenomena is existing or abolished so this uh, the illustration that uh, of course show that the removal of optic lobes abolishes circadian locomotor rhythms so initially when we are keeping in light dark cycle that animal daily activity you know the dark bands indicates uh, that active period the onset of activity you could see exactly at the same time since that's uh, the onset of dark uh, synchronized with the onset of activity and when we are removing that uh, optic lobe suddenly you could see that the rhythm is abolished becoming air rhythmic okay so another interesting rhythmic uh, rhythm uh, you could see in crickets because in the evening hours whenever you are moving in the field you could see lot of uh, chirping sounds of crickets you know and um, Uh, mostly the male cricket used to uh, sometimes he used to call cricket calls and it's uh, rhythmically uh, starts its activity call it's uh, rhythmically it starts it's calling exactly almost uh, every day at the same time you could see that and that's what the the band shows that's in a onset and almost throughout the night period you could see that the cricket sounds and sometimes in between there will be a break and uh, otherwise when we are uh, shifting in constant light period the cricket calling uh, rhythm its uh, onset is daily deviating you know instead of starting at the same time is a deviating the reason behind that the clock is having the cricket clock that uh, endogenous clock or uh, that is a true uh, body clock you get it's having the period length is more than 24 hours so in the absence of 24 hours any time cues the endogenous clock used to express and we can measure and we can come to know that the particular organism's endogenous clock period length will be either less than or more than or rarely that's exactly 24 hours the flexibility is required because otherwise that the day length will be varying throughout the year sometimes uh, uh, 14 hours sometimes uh, around 10 hours you know if it is uh, the clock when it's uh, rigid it will be uh, under predation so therefore the clock will be flexible or plastic and they used to adjust with the environment photo period and you could see again when we are keeping in dark uh, light dark they used to entrain as synchronized to the onset of darkness little uh, deviated okay so the cricket calling rhythm where the clock tissues so where the control um, tissues is located to study people uh, remove certain tissues and uh, Uh, observe that rhythm that rhythmic call uh, daily and uh, they found that, that when they are removing that sub esophageal ganglion in the insects the rhythm used to be abolished calling the cricket calling rhythm otherwise when you are removing that optic lobe the tissues in the eye close to that uh, compound eye you know that that is controlling that locomotor rhythm so two different centers is controlling that rhythmic pattern okay and you could see some of the measurements in uh, how one can measure in small rodents okay and uh, when we are measuring such a rhythmic uh, parameters we should not disturb the animals therefore normally you could see there's a resting cage because animal uh, that's in the laboratory we used to keep in resting that's animal cage in inside the animal cage we can see there's a small uh, free moving wheels so normally the rodents having a natural tendency whenever the lights off especially nocturnal they used to start its activity from burrows towards that foraging to find their mates in the natural environment 
So similarly, they have a natural tendency. When we are keeping even in the animal cage, they look for when its lights off, they used to move here and there. When it's accidentally entering a wheel, whenever it's rotating, they used to be that's uh, moving on wheels. And the animal used to think they are uh, running uh, for a long distance. But uh, just like when we are uh, walking on a track, okay, exercise track. So similarly, there's a small rodents one can use small. That's uh, we used to call this is a running wheel, no? That's a resting cage with a moving wheel. And there will be, uh, of course, uh, that magnetic switch, and we can connect with this um, uh, computer and software that are, data will be recorded, stored, and we can redrive the data. Then you can go for uh, similarly that large case to one can use for to measure that activity in uh, a rat or uh, squirrels and uh, relatively large animals. Okay. So what I can show some of the uh, that is similar rhythm parallelly uh, one minute I'll just show some of how one can see the rhythm no? so uh, just a minute. This is. Uh, I'll see last, okay. Just to want to show one slide, you know, just to get that uh, the students, they will be, uh, it, for them it will be interesting. We insert. So just I'll show that how this uh, we can see. So when we are placing the animals, normally this is a diurnal squirrel. Uh, when we place in the wheel and uh, uh, normally, uh, it's a diurnal animal, and when whenever there is a light, they start its activity. When when they are uh, moving on the wheel, and the read relay switch will be picked the signals because there is a magnetic switch will be there that used to be connected, and uh, we can measure this kinds of activity for 24 hours into seven into months into years without disturbing the animals much, and regularly one has to provide that. Uh, uh, food, of course, feed pellets and that cabin, and this is a water bottle. Okay, so this will help uh, to measure that animals without hurting the animals non invasively. At the same time, we can manipulate uh, the environmental conditions by providing uh, different kinds of light, different uh, uh, intensity, or different wavelengths of light. So, so we will move. I just wanted to show, at least uh, uh, otherwise people used to think that uh, how the animals used to uh, run on a wheel, you know, similarly there is a uh, uh, Yeah. And similarly, we, uh, because that last one we you had seen, uh, you have seen the... Uh, Only sound is coming. So we will move. 
yeah now you could see how uh, I understand few minutes is passing, but uh, at least uh, you'll get the students will get the idea how the uh, that animals used to move on a wheel and uh, what is the mechanism to uh, record non-invasively the circadian rhythm. Okay, this is a locomotor activity rhythm. One can measure that uh, when we are measuring the data used to get like this. You know that uh, the first day, 24 hours data has been plotted adjacently. To make the double plot to get the uh, clear view about that 24 hours rhythmic pattern. So we can get that 24 hours rhythmic pattern at each line indicates there's um, uh, 24, uh, 48 hours. And you could see this is 24 hours, 12 hours light, 12 hours uh, uh, first dark, then light. Since it's a diurnal animal, the squirrel used to get that uh, uh, their activity pattern like this. And you could see this vertically that uh, the line shows there's the intensity of activity. Then uh, starting of activity, ending of activity, we can uh, uh, even count, uh, we can calculate that number of rotation, wheel rotations. And each rotation uh, for a particular distance, you can calculate that the per hours, uh, how much distance moved. And similarly, you can also calculate that uh, the uh, speed of the activity, you know. Because naturally, some individuals used to be very speedy, some individuals were very slow, and some used to move very long distance. You can categorize, especially for drug research. You know, people in the market, you could see there's some drugs, the energy is post of my life. You know? People used to sometimes, you could see in the advertisement, the boost is the secret of my life. You know, <laughs> frequently you could see, and it's not advertisement. So, uh, truly, one can check that's. Uh, uh, after having certain drugs or certain uh, uh, what we call medicine, whether it's influencing the activity pattern or uh, sleep wake cycle, you can equally you can see that the activity pattern, active rest cycle or sleep wake cycle, or uh, yeah, that in uh, some cases it will be uh, fly rest. Okay. So this is the activity record. You can get so many things from that activity record. You know, even though uh, we could uh, collect the data non-invasively, but you can uh, enormously generate a huge quantum of data. And the application is endless. You can do so much of things. So then uh, the question comes, where the clock is located? You know, that the first scientist in the, almost in 68, uh, 1968, uh, uh, they looked for uh, that uh, the location of the clock. Finally, they found that uh, uh, supracosmetic nucleus. This is the clock location because every time when they are uh, uh, in the neurobiological research, when you are uh, disturbing or uh, listening a specific tissue and looking the behavior and uh, tallying that's a uh, uh, particular uh, event when the rhythmic phenomena abolish and people used to come to, you know, they used to confirm truly whether it's doing the, uh, exactly controlling the rhythmic phenomena. So Richter made lesions throughout the brain looking for the clock. Anterior hypothalamus region disrupted rhythmicity, other localized the clock to the supracosmetic nuclei, okay? especially in 1972, uh, Zucker and uh, Stephen, you know, they have uh, found that exactly the location. Otherwise, uh, Register uh, the hypothalamic region that uh, the whole year, this is the area that he has shown. So the supracosmetic nuclei, this is the, the true location for that. Okay. If we listen, then the whole uh, that rhythmic phenomena will be abolished. You know, that's uh, humans having huge number of uh, daily rhythm. That you could see here, you know, when we are keeping in constant uh, uh, condition that the rhythm used to free run, okay. Daily uh, starting activity, delay later on, later or later. And once if we destroy SEN, becoming arrhythmic, you know, this will tell us that's where that exactly located. The tissue section, brain section, you could see that's the location of the uh, neurons, you know, SEN. So that uh, otherwise, anatomical circadian path phase, because it will be nowadays. Uh, 
uh, you can have a separate uh, curriculum and uh, previously that uh, biological rhythm was part of either animal behavior or sometimes part of physiology now you could see that many universities even in uh, foreign countries medical university medical college they used to offer that chronobiology as a core paper for their students so because it's a lot of medical implications this uh, rhythmic phenomena when we are studying so this is that uh, you could see how that pathways is linked almost all parts of the brain fore brain and hind brain or even that uh, hippocampal regions you know that's uh, so many areas you could see this is the acn here and from here you could see that's uh, connectivity for different uh, uh, nucleus okay and that uh, the rhythmic phenomena because there are so many rhythms we could see that uh, activity sleep wake cycle body temperature cycle secretion of particular hormones and uh, enzyme secretions all rhythmic you know and uh, accordingly that's our body has designed that's uh, a diurnal or nocturnal or crepuscular you no know, similarly so there are uh, certain parameters where they are oppositely ticking that clock so for example that the when we compare with the nocturnal and diurnal uh, that uh, the active period is differing directly 12 hours apart because nocturnal during night hours diurnal during day time and hypothalamic secretion of serotonin serotonin is involving with so many uh, parameters behavior and you could see that oppositely facing you know nocturnal you could see that's uh, the peak during night hours here and the body temperature is also running opposite phase and pineal melatonin no so so many pineal melatonin you could see that's uh, you can in both cases same therefore pineal sometimes uh, when we are uh, commonly want to study some parameters uh, study pineal can be used as a marker there is a question uh, that coming to our mind that uh, when uh, the clock of diurnal and nocturnal some of the parameters running in opposite phase uh, whether is it right to use nocturnal uh, to extrapolate to diurnal human that is the question so then uh, human circadian rhythm is uh, another uh, fascinating area because uh, uh, in a uh, world in almost five countries they have that special setup Uh, to study that human circadian uh, rhythms especially uh, human uh, human isolation chamber no suppose for animals we can create that isolation facility in the laboratory condition for human it would be tough to uh, use that human as a model or subject to study that rhythm because always human used to apply their mind it would be difficult to at the same time when we use that cameras because that human isolation chamber in uh, uh, that funded by department of science and technology in india is uh, available in madurai kamaraj university there is a department uh, for uh, animal behavior separate department for animal behavior and there you can find that human isolation chamber because you can uh, isolate a uh, human being or human subject to study certain parameters and uh, completely away from that sectional environment in, uh, environment influences you know that to provide constant temperature constant uh, light dark cycles and it's a kind of time cues environment they used to provide so in human being you can study n number of uh, rhythmic parameters like sleep wake cycle body temperature behavior food and water intake hormones metabolism body fluids expression of certain genes you could see that a core body temperature also even though we used to say that's a 37 degree celsius is fluctuating it will be a cyclic and uh, you could see that close to onset of hour uh, that is a peak then coming down then again it's uh, during day time it's in pc because that the gray bar indicates that darkness similarly that urine volume is a kind of a cyclic and the cerebral uh, blood flow is also cyclic and uh, during night time there are more uh, blood flow you know and the uh, systolic pressure is also cyclic you could see growth hormone tryptophan sorry uh, 
and then thy thyrotrophin and cortisol. Cortisol is also uh, cyclic. Okay. So these are all that n number of uh, there's a more number of parameters one can study, and uh, whether that uh, human. Uh, so this is a standard cyclic parameter, cyclic city. How one can uh, look into that, and uh, a normal human being they used to have similar uh, nature cyclicity. If the person is uh, having some disease or uh, having some sleep-related problem or having some uh, disorders, when this cyclicity used to be changed. So then, what kinds of devices one can use to study the human circadian rhythm? So oh, nowadays there is a wrist watch like a device is available in the market. We used to say that active watch is uh, one can use to measure uh, core body temperature, thermal temperature of the skin and heart and respiratory respiration rate. And uh, one can the applications in clinical trials, military medicine and uh, training, you no, know, and pre-operative, post-operative, outpatient monitoring, healthcare, uh, telemedicine, sports medicine, and hazardous occupation, and all other things. And uh, this will help to measure the activity of a human being, that duration of rest, activity of rest, activity uh, to duration and rest period. And uh, we can use uh, whenever when we are uh, trying to establish some uh, drug trials in human being. This will be a good device, whether it will be a, a particular drug influencing the sleep wake cycle or body, other uh, rhythmic phenomena. So, the, when there is a circadian disruption, because the circadian clock, they used to uh, uh, daily, they used to get that um, time cues from the uh, environmental cycle, light dark cycle. And that used to be, of course, perceived by this uh, through eyes, the retinohypothalamic tract, and there will be direct connection to a suprachiasmatic nucleus. And uh, if there is any uh, problem in that uh, perceiving that light dark uh, cycle, or perceiving from maybe in the absence of uh, uh, that uh, vision, because the eyes are having two functions. One is that vision, image function. The another one is circadian function. Because very recently people found, that scientists found that, that in addition to vision uh, function, they used to have that circadian function also. The specialized neurons, uh, in addition to rods and cones, they have uh, that uh, specialized neurons to inform that light from darkness, to differentiate light from darkness. And accordingly, that the clock used to run. No, so in the absence of or in the disruption of clock, uh, then the lot of problems will be happening and the mood disorders and cognition and uh, sometimes causing for cancer and uh, metabolism uh, related and reproductive state, uh, endocrine, uh, stress responses, immune uh, system and uh, attention, cardiovascular sleep, you know, n number of is highly connected with the clock. You know, if the clock is disrupted, you could see that's almost, and therefore, uh, that uh, uh, mostly that people used to have seasonal affective dis disorders in the winter because that there may not be a that's good light and dark uh, cycle or a good amount of light. The clock is also will be aging similar to normal aging phenomena. So that's the uh, circadian rhythm and uh, rhythm. During that young and old period, you could see that waking and activity, that's the red uh, uh, line shows, graph shows, and that is that uh, elder people's rhythm, rhythm, and the blue line indicates young people rhythm. So waking activity, the amplitude will be diminished or reduced. You know, that uh, the uh, clock neurons is also that will be reflecting. You could see that body temperature in all cases, but period length almost period length will be altered and amplitude will be altered, but rhythm will be persisting. That you could see here, you know, temperature and cortisol here also, then uh, melatonin rhythm secretion you could see, and uh, here plasma glucose in all cases. So that's how you can use that uh, the circadian principles to 
for the betterment of uh, society or human being because the modern society having 24 hours life you know that's uh, due to that uh, the 24 hours requirement of uh, services uh, in the tele uh, telecommunication and military services hospital services or food supply you know and uh, due to that uh, people are uh, working in the shift works you know uh, night shift and mostly and uh, uh, because that human body that's a physiology designed to be active designed to work during day time but when they are suppressing their uh, sleep night time is designed to sleep when they are suppressing their sleep uh, by doing so many uh, artificial things and uh, in due course that will cause a lot of uh, uh, problems in the physio so that's what uh, you could see uh, because mainly the disorders of circadian rhythm will be happening due to that's uh, jet lag and the shift work you know jet lag when they are uh, traveling through transmarine flights you no know, eastward or westward toward uh, traveling towards uh, america or someone is traveling towards uh, uh, america to india you know that's the 12 hours uh, time difference and the clock will be sometimes that uh, the environment time will be advanced you no know? when they are landing in india from america that's uh, one supposed to they have to take sleep but uh, it will be a morning hours then again they have to go through that you know they may not be able to sleep appropriate so that will cause you know the people used to uh, and more over tra traveling through the transmarine lines that's that uh, that uh, the, uh, the jet lag you know that uh, the whole sleep wake cycles will be disrupted similarly shift work sleep disorder advanced sleep phase syndrome you know or advanced phase sleep disorder and this delayed phase sleep disorder non 24 hour sleep wake cycle disorder irregular sleep wake rhythm so jet lag i saw i told you that abrupt changes of the light dark cycle may cause a desynchrony between the entrain status of the endogenous clock and the external input readjustment will be taking step by step not a single jump okay so how one can simulate because now we can in the laboratory condition we can simulate and it would be difficult to uh, do that experiment uh on human being while uh, traveling in that uh, on normal flights or transmarine flights you no know, it would be highly expensive and uh, getting volunteers would be difficult and uh, therefore you can simulate that jet lag uh, condition in that uh, laboratory simply that uh, shifting that light dark cycles by advancing the darkness or delaying the darkness so normally when in light dark cycle that's a uh, 12 hours light 12 hours darkness that a nocturnal animal starts its activity here and synchronized with the darkness and the days to entrain and followed by when we are advancing that uh, the clock may not be such a plastic or elastic to so a single jump nine hours jump and uh, they used to take uh, hours by hours and it will take about uh, eight to nine days to resynchronize to the new light up cycle so this is a transient cycles or temporary cycles and again when we are resynchronizing it will be reentraining a reentrainment and similarly you could see in animal model simply keeping in ld shifting that a single 9 hours advance or 6 hours phase advance some animals used to uh, start its activity immediately you know that they have that therefore internal variation or Uh, a popul uh, population uh, that uh, there will be variation in population so individual variations will be there and uh, some strain of uh, mice they used to uh, take more number of cycle to resynchronize you can see the number of cycle here there will be a single jump similarly that's that uh, particular this strain they have ability to jump activity after uh, advancing you know, from ld to dd single jump so that this is similar in the diurnal animal that how many days it's take 9 hours you could see almost 9 hours advance when we are doing light dark cycle almost 12 to 14 days is taking to resynchronize the cycles we can also simulate chronic jet lag condition in shift you no know, or shift work because 
this uh, chronic jet lag has shift work uh, is equal to that rotational shift work or uh, you could see that uh, nine hours uh, some people used to have shift work and that's uh, for two days advanced two days uh, night shift two days late shift or evening shift two days and that uh, next day shift you know similarly we can simulate that uh, chronic shift work jet lag in laboratory condition because you could see here uh, uh, that nine hours advance after today's delay nine hours then advance then okay. most of the and that flight crews they used to experience like this you know uh, because when someone is uh, uh, flying from india to america then after a day then from america to india then india to america they have that tremendous jet lag problem so that when we uh, you, when we uh, you just see that when we are activity record of mouse uh, of course when we simulate jet lag and placed mouse their activity pattern will be like this so initially normal ld advanced delay advanced delay their whole activity will be disrupted during this period that's animal may not uh, similarly that human being you know that's there may not be a static uh, uh, rhythmic phenomena in the active rest cycle Similarly, when the active rest cycle, when they are disturbing, when they, when the, when it's disturbed, their whole physiology will be disturbed, and even uh, memory will be affected, and uh, uh, their ability will be changed. So, therefore, this kinds of principle will be adapted for uh, in a sports person, international sports meet. You know, when uh, someone is going and uh, traveling such a long distance and uh, next day immediately if they start to play definitely their physiology will not be desynchronized to the local time definitely it may not be favoring to the uh, team those who are traveled from other uh, long distance so therefore many times that's the local uh, the local team will be having their positivity to win the game so disruption of circadian locomotor activity rhythm you can also see disruption in male versus female. Females are relatively a bit strong enough to uh, withstand that uh, this kinds of active rest, uh, but uh, male cases a lot of disturbances. And uh, in another cases, uh, we can use this uh, recording setup. We can monitor activity pattern. And in Dalton lymphoma induced uh, mice, how they are affecting that activity. This is before in inducing induction of uh, inoculation of the Dalton lymphoma. It's a 12 hours activity. And you could see that after inoculation, slowly that's a gone exactly. This is a control. So we can shift the uh, phase of the rhythm. As I told you, we can uh, advance delay the clock. Similarly, rhythm by using 40 and non-40 cues. And uh, we can hear that so by applying here a particular drug, we can delay the clock. And in some places, we can advance. You know, it's uh, the drug itself not having uniform action in the physiology. You know, the morning hours when we are taking it will be different action. Evening hours, sometimes therefore, uh, some that uh, physician they used to ask that to have the drugs morning. Some drugs they used to evening whether they have screen. Uh, uh, that uh, by using that chronobiology because there's a new branch of biology is known as chrono uh, what we call chrono medicine you know? when one has to take the drug you know that itself is uh, having different effects and international sports miss as i told you that uh, playing abroad jet lag and performance will be uh, affected okay due to jet lag performance will be affected Team India goes to Australia, face advances, hard to adjust to. Team India goes to England, face delay, still a kind of disturbance. In other sports, same consideration. This is in Olympics and other international events. The home team has a circadian advantage. Understand the best time of performance and adjust the circadian rhythm better results. And a few more slides. I'll uh, just uh, take. Uh, Oh, for less than five minutes. And uh, even people are having different chronotypes, you know, in that uh, morning type, evening type, and intermediate type. How many of those uh, watching the video will be happy to go to sleep at 2 a.m. and wake up at 10 a.m.? 
Similarly, how many would like to go to sleep at 8.30 p.m. advancing? Here is delaying. Normally, uh, delaying the clock would be easy because there's a, the clock, uh, since human circadian clock is to have that uh, about 24 hours clock. We, even though uh, we are uh, daily, we used to call 24 hour and uh, that uh, we used to adjust to the natural environment like that cycle. Therefore, it looks like 24 hours clock hours. But otherwise, if you are staying in constant conditions, our clock is more than 24 hours. Therefore, delaying our clock bit easy, uh, rather shrinking or advancing our clock. The example is we can delay our clock, we can go to bed at 2 a.m. But at the same time, we can, uh, if someone asks us to go to sleep at 8 p.m. or 6 p.m., definitely it would uh, not be easy. How many would like to go to sleep at 11 p.m. and wake up to 7 a.m., okay? So this is all depends upon your uh, which type, morning type or evening or intermediate type. Now, provided you should not have any work next day, you know, if it, is, it should be a holiday and uh, you should not have, otherwise normally parents used to awake this, uh, children's uh, the time, uh, that's morning time, seven, eight, you know, uh, they used to wake their children, wake up their children. Otherwise, uh, if it is a holiday, the students or people used to try to uh, lengthen uh, their uh, sleep as per their uh, own clock. So chronotype affects performance. You know, late chronotype very comfortable at night, expected to be alert at 2 a.m. Early chronotype uh, unable to maintain vigilance ordinarily at 2 a.m. Late chronotype hard to do work early in the morning. Early chronotype hard to do work after. So there are so many, of course, uh, therapies uh, in use to put the clock in order. There are light therapy, bright light, and bright light therapy, or uh, people used to sometimes because the light used to having direct link to our uh, clock, you know, biological clock or circadian clock. So therefore, the light is uh, getting uh, having this more effect or influence uh, in our clock. So your routine, day, night, or activity rest cycle, scheduled meals, because even though I told you that our body is designed to be active during daytime, if daytime will be fine. At the same time, when we are doing work at during uh, shift work at during night hours, when we have food three times during night hours, definitely there will be a problem. So that uh, will be a uncomfortable condition during uh, the night shift. And people try to have something during night hours to be awake. So that's melatonin supplements, physical exercise, and the medicinal herbs and drugs. So that uh, in summarizing, that maintain body clock or biological clock, we can say that we can have a healthy life balanced behavioral and body states and impaired uh, that's a disrupted body clock used to have impaired sleep wake cycle anxiety and mental states fatigue and dizziness okay thanks thank you all for your patience almost now one hour past yes uh, i'll be happy to uh, answer your some of your questions Thank you, Professor Singh Rawal, for your wonderful lecture and lecture. of how the circadian clock functions in maintaining a healthy body and healthy life. Through this lecture, we had a glimpse of your scientific research, and I hope it was quite interesting and informative for all our participants. Thank you once again, Professor Singh Rawal. Now it is the time for the question and answer session. With your permission, sir. I would like to put before you some questions we have from our participants. Yeah, it will yeah. be a pleasure. Uh, we have a few questions from our participants, sir. The first question that we have is from uh, one of the students, Tara Shankar Odhikari. Uh, the question is, uh, in general, the circadian rhythm comes from daily changes and the Earth's rotation around the planet's axis. So how does ultra rhythm work, sir? 
circadian rhythm you know actually uh, the, uh, not all rhythm is having synchronized with that lidoc cycle many for example uh, that ecg rhythm and uh, even eye blinking rhythm respiratory rhythm is all Uh, pranobi madam pranobi madam i think there is some problem uh, with the video and audio yes it uh, i think there is some problem there is out of there studio is you okay okay oh okay yeah sorry for this uh, in interruption what i want to say that so, you know many rhythm even in physiology so yeah, many rhythm and the uh, whole uh, 24 hour rhythm what uh, uh, circadian rhythm can be divided into many uh, and circadian rhythm another one is circadian more than 20 hours rhythm all are known as infrared rhythm and uh, less than 20 hours known as ultradian known as ultradian but uh, many body uh, rhythmic phenomena which is having less than because some rhythm used to have seven days some used to have uh, that uh, few seconds easy sleep and eye blinking or respiration and many other rhythms which is not governed by the circadian clock no because otherwise what will happen they are independent from the clock they will be having the control under the other control but mainly light dark cycle used to drive the circadian clock the circadian clock and uh, we could see we have seen the mechanism here we have seen the mechanism yes sir okay yes sir uh, sir the next question is again from tarashankar odhikari the question is is there any unique characteristic of circadian clock in uh, poikilothermals so unique uh, yes poikilothermic yes. you know we can see in some cases uh, people have studied in lizards no a lizard yeah. and in poikilothermy the 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 high sensitive for the temperature and the temperature used to provide time cues for the animals you know otherwise also it, uh, uh, in mammalian model also that temperature used to provide cues but uh, poikilotherms they used to be more sensitive for that uh, temperature cues You are simply saying that temperature yes, can sir. act as one of the great keeper at times, and the microthermal is the most important for the temperature. Okay. Thank yeah, you, please. sir. Uh, third question. Third question is: uh, Are there any diseases caused by the alteration of uh, circadian rhythm? Yeah, there are more. I told you yeah, there are when uh, circadian rhythm is disrupted. Uh, uh, mostly sleep wake cycle, uh, the sleep disorders will be there. And uh, alternatively, the those who are going for uh, shift work, they used to have lot of problems. Even though initially it looks like uh, the uh, during uh, the year, uh, or during the yearly period of their job. They may not have. They used to suppress because daily they used to suppress their sleep and uh, do to be awake. To and they have to do two things. One thing is to they have to suppress their sleep. Another thing is they have to be awake and acting. Because mentally they have to be active. No, otherwise uh, normally sleep uh, cycle will be disrupted or uh, the whole body. Uh, uh, the gastrointestinal uh, related problems will be there the people are saying that sleep workers have a lot of uh, stress and uh, anxiety and 
what it called uh, even sometimes cause cancer even sometimes yeah next so uh, one more question from another participant is uh, is there a, any relation between certain wavelength of light and the circadian rhythm yeah certainly recently yes. we could see literature see literature a lot of uh, work is going with the wavelength going with the wavelength if you could uh, see morning yes see morning we may not have that uh, and uh, if you see that sky that's a lot of uh, other wavelengths than blue and uh, during day time lot of blue and evening hours uh, relatively less blue and uh, that a human circadian clock is very much sensitive for blue light and uh, because that the circadian system especially um, the retinal hypothalamic tract they used to send the signal to the clock and uh, the wavelengths they used to tell to put in order you know and at the same time the you know, rodents cannot be sensitive for the red light you know that the wavelength of the uh, wavelength is about 6 plus it is not sensitive for the especially uh, the clock even when you are using the clock even when you use the uh, light like uh, like which is having the like, uh, 640 or 640 model 640 model 640 wavelength that will not affect the wavelength at the same time uh, blue light or even that uh, even near blue light the goes to the 400 to 700 decibel range is less than uh, 400 calling the uv and the uh, 322 Calling in red, you know, and there's a uh, even calling UV. There are three different uh, uh, kinds of UV: UV A, B, C, and uh, UV A means uh, that is uh, close to close uh, sorry, that three twenty to four hundred UV A, you know, and around three six four, you know, it will be peak of UV A spectrum. even uh, some of the animals is more sensitive for the uva that will be having able to influence the clock but uh, fortunately all diurnal mammals especially even human being we have that uh, special device in our uh, eyes they used to cut the spectrum you know that's uh, our eyes uh, used to allow that uh, wavelength more than 400 are very marginal range but some of the recently we have seen some of the even diurnal animal uh, they used to sensitive for uva which will be able to influence the circadian rhythm but uh, most of the nocturnal mammals or nocturnal animals they used to have more sensitivity even for uva even and uh, but in the natural selection but in the they are nocturnal they used to be active they during the night not able to uh, see direct sun and uh, sky during day time so therefore they may not be able to have any uh, effects of uva uh, otherwise simply saying that different wavelength having different effect and the most effect uh, used to have the blue wavelength and even sometimes uh, green you know? when the wavelength goes towards that uh, infrared that relatively less and uh, the, therefore even uh, if you have this red light used to have at least effect in our circadian system in our circadian system thank you sir uh i think there was another question that was being displayed on the screen pranobi madam can you please display the question on the screen pranobi madam please can you display the question on the screen yes so uh, there is another question being displayed on the screen sir it is from najimuddin and the question is how biological rhythm controls our depression yeah depression normally you know that's yeah, uh, when we are uh, daily exposing we are uh, normal light dark cycle 
there will be less chance there will be due to other reasons to other reasons um, due to some mental related or but mostly environmental related if there is uh, due to light dark cycle when we expose the good amount of light and dark matter what we call the restrict our activity and what for our regular sleep then that would be minimized uh, otherwise if the environmental light dark cycle is disrupted definitely which will cause physiological thing uh, uh, due to that suppression of melatonin because uh, today i didn't focus much on this uh, mechanistic behind uh, the circadian related that is a little insight at the moment uh, once clock is disrupted then the input from the clock you know the sleep cycle and uh, 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 temperature cycle and uh, hormone rhythm, you know, that one will be ultimately due to affect uh, even disruption or even mood related. You no, know, because if the melatonin if it is suppressed, you know, it's uh, definitely it will affect the sleep wake cycle, which will be causing that mood related disorder. Otherwise, if you have that normal sleep wake cycle, good sleep wake. and definitely that will be in, uh, rectified you know so once the clock disrupted clock function is disrupted clock input is disrupted definitely which will be uh, key for so many other parameters that uh, one of the thing will be depression depression mostly that's uh, less lights you know exposed uh, if it is if at all uh, environment related because other there are mental related work that it will be endless you know? yeah next question uh pranobi madam can we have the next question on the screen please yeah yeah so as you can see there is another question from tashankar odikari the question is in chronobiology is it accepted that desynchronization of peripheral oscillators relative to scn promotes the disease yes uh, actually there is uh, today we had uh, seen only that's a uh, master clock you know that's uh, there are peripheral master clock oscillators then cycle all are you know, synonymous words that uh, today we had seen only that's master clock that is a prokaryotic nucleus and uh, there are peripheral clocks and uh, all the peripheral clocks are the even intestine and liver and kidney and heart you know all the uh, that's uh, organs used to have that uh, Uh, their own clock you know there will be signals uh, uh, coming from that master clock that uh, based on that and uh, studies shows that if the clock master clock is disrupted it becoming arrhythmic that other things also becoming affected peripheral oscillators also will be affected and uh, in uh, ultimately it will lead to the disease because that uh, once rhythm is affected and all the gastrointestinal related things will be affected suppose kidney if it is affected definitely it will cause for a disease you know but it definitely there will be a link uh, master clock and peripheral yeah next question sudha the next question sir as you can see it is being displayed on the screen uh it is from mrinmoy adhikari the question is what's the difference in collecting tissue samples under constant darkness and light or dark cycles <laughs> is uh, of course is a good question um uh, i appreciate the student uh, of course i could appreciate all the students of those who are asking question and uh, i appreciate the students uh, he as he Uh, imagine how to collect the sample during darkness you no know? that is the question normally many people those who are not in circadian uh, related field they may not be able to understand that uh, when one has to collect the sample collect you know? and uh, because that's uh, we are when we are studying about the clock you no know, biological clock even collecting sample itself is a time dependent when one has to collect the samples and his question is when we are collecting the sample in light dark cycle 
uh, is clear that say uh, either one can collect the sample during night hours once and during dark hour once and mostly we used to prefer after onset of uh, light you know one or two hours later and after onset of dark one or two hours later the reason behind when we are going for collection of sample exactly at lights on we may not be able to know the effects of some data it's due to lights on or off or due to that true effects of something and therefore we used to select that uh, the sample collection that's uh, either we used to call jt uh, jkeeper time 2 means lights after lights of 2 hours you know uh, otherwise we used to call jt 14 means after lights off or after dark of dark uh, dark onset 2 hours you know that is uh, uh, say that in normal light dark cycle 8 pm and morning 8 am this could be appropriate time for light during light dark cycle during uh, darkness one has to look into this animal clock how one can because many people until unless not in certain biology again may not be able to uh, sometimes understand or know so uh, we can calculate we can come to know that uh, what is the time of animal particular animal for that one has to place the animal in we we have to see that's place in constant darkness we can see daily onset of activity and by seeing that today onset of activity and uh, tomorrow onset of activity or yesterday onset of activity we can come to know that that animal period one cycle how much if we divide that's uh, the cyclicity at the period length divided by 24 hours then we can come to know that that one circadian hour is equal to how much that's uh, uh, that uh, environmental hours okay so therefore uh, we can calculate that timing and later on that is question that uh, the two answer it to come during night continuous darkness that there will be total darkness you know how one can be able to see uh, the animal and then handle then sampling dissecting sampling we can use that's uh, that's what the last uh, question i briefly explain about more about uh, the wavelength of light that uh, most of the animals are less responsive or not responsive for wavelengths of uh, 640 plus okay so when we use red filter torch light definitely it will not affect the circadian system at the same time we can do that all sampling okay by the way we can do that so but uh, it would be a uh, little uh, post uh, strain because otherwise uh, mostly our students used to go to our laboratory to feed the animals when they are keeping in constant darkness during uh, by using the red filter torch at the same time we should not use directly you know uh, directly focus on the face of the animal uh, wherever required we can uh, when we use the red filter touch you know that uh, it will be pointing exactly the surrounding place will looks like dark okay, i hope i have answered to the question uh, there is another question coming from one of uh, our participants jayanti das has asked the question what is the easiest and least invasive method to determine the circadian rhythm disruption in rats and humans? The easiest method now yes. in addition to, of course, previously we were using, uh, you have seen, uh, I hope, you, did you see the circa wheel running activity, the video clips, did you see now? Because in between I played. No? Uh, Sudha, did you see that video clip? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is one yeah. of the non uh, method because uh, yeah. this is the least uh, disturbance least to the animal. Uh, because when we are placing the animal that is used to run on the wheel, uh, they used to have ad libitum of food and water. There may not be any problem. The other method is instead of wheel running, because wheel running used to even reduce the stress of the animal. The reason behind in the natural environment daily that animal used to move that's a good amount of uh, time and duration and distance 
for the different uh, purposes uh, finding mates and finding food or uh, foraging purposes and various activities when we are keeping in that simply that uh, animal cage sometimes it will be causing stress uh, for prolonged period when we are keeping different cage will be uh, causing stress so by providing the wheel and uh, when it's uh, uh, measuring that type of locomotor activity in the wheel running uh, cage uh, definitely this is one of the method in addition there is another method without having this wheel running even simply you can put in a cage and you can just simply there's a, under the cage you can have that's a small platform in which there's a infrared sensor will be there whenever the animals we used to move you know that's a, as i shown for uh, that how they are recording for prosophila melanogaster you know that's there will be infrared sensor and the emitter and sensor will be there whenever they are moving crossing that uh, sensor pathway and definitely that used to break the signal and that used to provide another uh, ecs one and uh, yeah this is the another method uh, i think that was the last question sir and uh, thank you so much for answering the question sir and uh, i hope all the participants have found the answers to their questions and uh, now uh, i would like to i i, I request dr rusha chaha to please uh, deliver the final vote of thanks yes thank you sudha yes thank you sudha dr singer ravel sir it was an honor to have you with us today thank you for sharing with us your valuable time your findings and experiences your valuable speech on this topic of biological rhythm has enriched our knowledge it is interesting to know that this topic is not restricted to animal behavior studies but even for various medical implications in humans I'd like to thank the audience for actively participating in this session. I am also thankful to Pranomi Madam, Shudha Madam, and Dr. Singer Aval Sir for making this technical session successful. I hope all of you have enjoyed today's webinar. The last part of our webinar will be held on 10th of July. So see you then. Thank you. Test. Yes.